welcome everyone. <laughs> we are excited to have you all here today. Maria, we are very excited to, to have you here today. So as you know, CSI stands for Connect, Share and Inspire. And uh, we are going to be talking about secondary rubrics today. And we have two presenters, Greg Price and uh, Christopher Johnson. And they will be talking about secondary rubric. They experience using uh, secondary rubrics. So they'll talk about how and why. Um, I will quickly go over the house rules for this webinar because it will be an interact it is a, an interactive session so we'll have you'll have plenty of opportunity to ask questions to the presenters and leave your comments so basically during the webinar um, you can either chat and leave your questions in chat or if you want to turn on the mic which you did uh, you can do that and uh, participate that way when you're not speaking including the presenters uh, please keep your mics muted so that we're not getting any background noise and also if uh, you experience during the webinar if you um, experience any technical issues um, let us know via chat if you lose connectivity and collaborate for example uh, you can always email us at BB support and we'll help you get back to collaborate so and now I will introduce our presenters uh, Greg Price and Christopher Johnson so Greg Price is the academic program director for masters arts and leadership and a course uh, manager for the Human Resource Management at City University of Seattle. Greg also teaches um, a number of courses leadership in leadership and business. In private industry, Greg served as director for a training organization in Tokyo, Japan, and he is presently a publisher and vice president for a regional publishing company. And our second presenter, um, Christopher Johnson, uh, started his new role as the director of the Office of Institutional Effectiveness at City University of Seattle in August 2016. Prior to joining CityU, Chris served for nine years in similar roles in the Washington Community and Technical College system. Uh, and before coming to Washington, Chris spent 14 years on the German-French border where he taught English uh, courses. He was also an adjunct um, uh, instructor and program director at Karlsruhe University of Apply Applied Sciences. That's a German university and I can never pronounce it right. So I apologize, Chris. I know I didn't do it right. So without further ado, you did fine. Uh, yeah, Chris and Greg, please take it away. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Katrina. So secondary rubrics, why and how? So this webinar is uh, designed for CityU teaching faculty and as well as administrative faculty and really for anyone who wishes to understand more about institutional compliance. And uh, in this webinar, you, there's going to be two sections in the webinar. Uh, the first section is going to talk about the what and the why. Uh, the second section is going to be more about the how, uh, the how-to portion. So uh, in section one, really, we're going to dial into the uh, understanding secondary rubrics, uh, why CityU uses them, and what secondary rubrics measure. Uh, the section two is going to talk more about uh, where to find secondary rubrics in the course shell and how to use them and then of course how to avoid mistakes. So I'm going to turn this over to Chris and he'll go ahead and uh, carry on with probably much of uh, section number one. So there you go Chris, you're on. Okay, so yeah, you know one of the we have secondary rubrics, they're built in the blackboard, so why do we have them? And so that's, that's what this section's gonna cover. So next slide, please. Um, so what are they? 
basically what we're doing is we're capturing and aggregating and analyzing. It's basically the secondary rubrics are a tool to do these three things, um, capture, aggregate, and analyze sitting you learning goals and program learning goals. So, um, and institutionally, they allow um, leaders to analyze, report on, set baselines and targets for CDU learning goals. But also, um, a really important aspect of secondary rubrics are that they are faculty driven. And, um, you know, I'll talk more about that in, in, in a minute. So, oh, Maria, if you have any questions, please stop me at any time. I, I do. Can I jump in? Yeah, please do. Okay. So so I'm digging around with these right now um, for ours. So I understand the CDU learning goals. The program right. learning goals, are they, they the same as what we're calling the program learning outcomes, PLOs? Yes, they are. Yes, okay, thank that's you. correct. Yes. Thanks. Thank, you're welcome. Next slide, please. So these are the six CDU learning goals. You know, and one of the, and one of the things is the... So the, you know, the institutional learning goals, the CityU learning goals are very broad because they're supposed to encompass um, all of our programs, especially at the, at the undergrad level. Um, you know, in other words, anyone with an um, undergrad degree would know these. For the grad degrees, um, the, the, actually the program learning outcomes become more of a focus. So anyway, those are our six, six goals. So I'll go ahead and take this next one, Chris, because it's really a, a little bit uh, going into the program learning uh, outcomes. It says goals here, but it, it, it's a typo. It should say outcomes. Uh, that's what PLOs are. So um, you've seen the six uh, learning goals. And now with regard to the, uh, the program learning outcomes, these are really specific to the program. Uh, there could be as few as six. Um, often there are more. And it's recommended that the programs provide the, um, the PLOs within the course shell. So if they're not in the course shell, they're, they're always found in the syllabus uh, for the course that is being taught. Uh, PLOs, they support student learning within the specific program, and they are aligned with the CL, uh, CULGs, the um, City U Learning Goals. So this next slide is going to uh, be about those, um, the program design guide, and this is really where program directors uh, align their program with, with all of the aspects, um, the, the City U Learning Goals, the program learning outcomes, and the course learning outcomes. So uh, it's a very, very useful tool. And um, I'm going to probably spend a little bit of time on this one just because I want you to understand it pretty well. The, um, the tool is called the Program Design Guide. It's created by the program director. And it assures the dean, the provost, the accredit and accreditors that the program is in alignment. Uh, the program design guide is used to align the, C, uh, the COGS, we'll call them COGS, and the, uh, the PLOs. And then those are aligned to a specific course. So more specifically, the CULGs and the PLOs, they're aligned to specific uh, assignments within a course. And consequently, when you see this, um, when you see the secondary rubric being applied, it's only applied to a single assignment within the course. Uh, there's still another acronym, and that's the one in the middle of the screen there that you see the um, course learning outcome, and that's a CLO. Uh, for example, the, uh, in this presentation, you can see on the screen the first CULG in the program design guide uh, for the Master of Arts in Leadership. Uh, the gold row at the top, this really describes the function of the columns. The, uh, the green row describes the... Um, you know, what's going on. I'm sorry, the gold row is identifying the content in the columns. The green row is really the function of the gold column. So now the blue is really where it, it all comes together. So in this example, you can see a single uh, CULG listed. That's pro professional competency and professional identity. And you can see how it's aligned. So if you see the, um, note that the CULG is aligned to the PLO, which is aligned to a single assignment in three different courses. 
And this is how the assessments are aligned in the program. So there, in the furthest uh, column to the right, going one to the left where you see the IP and M. The I is introductory, the P is practice, and the M is mastery. Uh, the I really is assessed at the beginning of the program, the P is more in the middle, uh, that's practice, and the mastery is, um, is really, you know, did they reach their goals uh, in the program. So this mapping is done for each of the um, six CDU learning goals. Uh, the alignment assures students are learning in a coordinated and aligned manner. And so with that, I'm going to give it back to Chris on the next slide, and he'll say why this is all important. Well, there's, there's two aspects of it. <laughs> um, well, the B is accreditation requires that we provide documented evidence that and what I mean is we, as the faculty, are assessing these learning outcomes at these three institute at these three levels. Um, you know, the co, the institutional level, the program level, and the course level. Now, um, and the the stick behind that is is we um, we get our federal financial aid if we are regionally accredited. And so the accreditation actually has two or three standards that specifically, they specifically say that we need to uh, have document evidence that we're assessing the learning outcomes and um, that the faculty are driving it, that they're choosing the, like the program learning outcomes are chosen by the faculty of that program, the course learning outcomes are chosen by and, and, and by the, the faculty and the, that teach those particular courses, et cetera. And the other thing too is they require documented evidence of a continuous improvement process. So, you know, that the, there's periodic uh, uh, analysis of basically how, you know, how are these, uh, how is this process working? Are students reaching the learning goals? Are the learning goals adequate? Are the assignments adequately assessing them? Are they too easy? Are they too hard? And, and why? And that's a, that is a consensus built. But the secondary rubrics is they actually, it covers the capturing of the stage. It gives actually a body of evidence and data that uh, faculty can use to evaluate um, their programs at the learning outcomes level. That was a mouthful, Maria, and you're welcome to ask a question. <laughs> I just raised my hand. Or two. Okay. <laughs> okay. Fire actually, away, ma'am. <laughs> okay. This is perfect timing. Um, so on the last slide, um, and what you guys are both saying is that these align to one assignment. Is that, did I hear um, that so well, yeah, yeah, sorry, go we ahead. We only have to identify one assignment or because they could align. I, what I'm doing right now is I'm working on aligning our assignments with our portfolio and our learning outcomes. Okay. So I'm trying to identify okay. assignments for students to then use for their portfolio. So I'm doing a whole alignment thing right now. But I'm finding that multiple assignments can relate to our PLOs. So then do I need to take it to the next step and say whether or not it's introduct introductory, practice, or mastery? Well, okay, so so let me answer the question this way. Um, there's no requirement in accreditation or that it needs to be aligned to one assignment, but that's probably a good place to start. Okay. Um, and the other part of it is, uh, um, the assessment process and, and what I described in the previous slide, or the next slide actually, what I described is, a, is almost, it, it's a Goldilocks, um, it's a kind of a Goldilocks question, the just right, because um, it can be overdone, it can be really yeah. burdensome for, the fa for faculty because they're teaching, um, their primary purpose, purpose is teaching and learning. Um, working with the students. So you need to provide enough evidence, um, I would say enough evidence that this process is taking place. So informally, so, so, so informally this process can be taking place at 
with, as you said, Maria, in multiple assignments. Okay. So the question is, where do we formalize it? Okay. And we need to formalize it enough so we provide evidence to accreditation that we're doing it. But we also not we shouldn't overdo it um, if we, for example, the other extreme is you know documenting everything as, that has to do with assessment. And that's a sure way to you know drive everyone crazy and for good reason. It's too much work. Okay. So we just need so to provide so. So in a way, so the other answer is, you know, when we have these introductory practicing master level, I think, I personally think of those as like assessment checkpoints. Okay. You know, and, and I guess, so, so one of the questions is if you, now, now let's just say, you know, let's, let's say f we're doing it for one assignment or project or capstone or portfolio per mastery level that's three times within a program so so the art there is to figure out where where which assessment is going to give you the most bang for your buck that makes sense okay to, gotcha so that's that's good that helps that's very helpful so we've got a, uh, a a small little quiz for you. Not that you probably don't know what these are because you're fully in, invested in what uh, what's happening right now. But uh, name a city you learning goal, and you're probably going to read one right now. <laughs> I, I did because I took notes. Uh, I, I don't know where my chat board is, so um, I'll just. Oh wait, no, I don't know. I'll give That's okay. You, you're you're on speaker. You can go ahead. Okay. Um, uh, professional competency and a sense of identity. Bingo. Yay. Yay. Winner. Yay. You can pick up your be, prize that at the a, no. <laughs> That would be a tough question to answer, though, because they're so, with having six of them. Mm hmm So, okay. Yeah. Good. And I and nice I job. myself have I never can remember them, and that's just typical for Chris. He always has to look <laughs> things up. Yeah, I mean, me too. <laughs> so where would I? Here, here's my question though: Where would I find those um, if I needed to look them up? Mm. Excellent question. Um, we do have them on our website, okay. on the CityU website. It should be under like where they have accreditation, if I remember correctly. Okay and okay. things like that. So we, we do have them listed there. But, you know, and that's a, one thing is, you know, um, that we've been talking about in Greg and I and, and the assessment committee meeting and, and other places as well is, is you know, um, maybe, you know, the students need, the students, yes. um, you know, having them on the syllabus, the program outcomes and the city you learning outcomes as well. Again, in graduate level work, um, the program learning outcomes become front and center because you're right. so specialized in the field. Right, but I do agree they need to be on the um, every one of our syllabi. And that's why I'm going through and looking at those right now. And Maria, I'd be happy to help you when you, you know, with certain details. I can provide you with a program design guide. Um, you know, maybe that'll help you in what you're doing and different things like that, show you how that works, that kind of stuff. That would be very helpful. That would have been helpful yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be happy to. Okay, next uh, next slide is um, well, those are the those are the six. Yeah, city you learning goals. And uh, okay, so choose. Um, so, what do the letters IPM stand for? IPM. Oh, the, it must be the introductory practice and mastery. Bingo. Right again. Well done. Yep. Yay. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. And so, okay, so, you know, we have a, a time for questions. So at this point, uh, what we're going to do is probably go into the next section of the of the webinar. And you are, I mean, if there's any questions that you have with regard to the, um, you know, that the how and the whys at this point. I'm good right now. Thank you. Very well. Okay, so we'll get into the um, the hows, the how to. And so now that you have this uh, this understanding of uh, the what and the whys, um, this next section is really going to talk about the hows of secondary rubrics, and we're going to show you uh, in it in a uh, like an example in a course shell. Uh, it's not going to be a real course shell, but and you 
I'm going to leave student names out so that there's going to be a little bit of difficulty in really you know seeing it in a very clear way because there's no student names but um, just first know that uh, secondary rubrics they're going to be set up in the course shell prior to the start of the class uh, they are entered in the into the course shell and placed within the assignment where grading is going to be occurring uh, inserting the secondary rubrics into the shell is done by the program director so it's not done by the uh, teaching faculty. The job of the teaching faculty is really to apply the grading to the rubrics following the submission of the student's assignment when it comes due. So they're not hard to do. These are very, very easy. They may be a little clunky, uh, but they're not hard. And this section is going to show you all about that. So, so to show you um, by, um, by example, the... Uh, this is really, the title says where to find secondary rubrics in. <laughs> I'm not expecting you to kind of figure out where these are at, but uh, I'm going to show you where they are. Uh, they are, it, it's really going to be a step-by-step -step process, and um, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to kind of do like a mock-up of a, of a student paper. So on the screen, on the image to the left, you'll see the, um, the control panel. And you'll see this in any of your course shells. Um, you're gonna, what you're gonna do is you're gonna um, click on to the uh, the grade center, and then you're gonna click into the either the full grade center or the assignments section of that. And what you'll get is this. And I clicked into the assignment section of the grade center, and it only shows the assignment. So any discussion boards you have or quizzes or things, they will not show. So this is only for assignments. And um, let's see, so for obvious for FERPA reasons, you're not going to see any students in there. So, um, but anyway, this is what you see. And we're going to choose one of those assignments to, to grade. And uh, when you do, you're going to you know, do the regular sort of way that you would choose an assignment um, that a student submitted. And you will go down to the last attempt, as shown on, that, on the screen. And um, then what, uh, what comes up is uh, there's you know, another, another screen that comes up. And it really is the, uh, the assignment. And it's the rubric. Uh, there's a text box for you, but there's this little down arrow, and this is where you get into the rubrics. And you would click that button, and what shows then are are the rubric um, components. And in this particular example, you see two rubric components. One of them is uh, social and environmental reporting, and that says used for grading. And then there's the program and city goals secondary rubric, and that would be the one that you would use for these secondary rubrics. When you click into that secondary rubric section, uh, the what you're going to see is the uh, the image on the left. And notice that uh, for this particular assignment that we're grading, it is for the CULG 3A and 3B. It's really three, but it's broken down into an A and a B in this particular example. So the, um, the instructor would grade the, um, the student's paper based on you know what they what they believe in, and if they need help to really think through the rubric, uh, they would click on this "Show Me" description where the red arrow is pointing, and it would open up just like in any rubric, and it would give the examples just how to read that particular section of the rubric. Now, this is um, maybe the clunky section. After you're done with grading the rubric, uh, the picture on your left, you'll see a red arrow pointing down to where it says save rubric. And of course you click the save rubric. Uh, the next um, uh, pop-up window is gonna come up and it's gonna be this um, image that you see to the right where it says courses.cityu.edu says, and you have two buttons, one's okay and one's canceled. Now intuitively you would think okay. <laughs> but here's where the challenge is. You actually hit cancel okay. uh, because it's asking you, this is important, really, it really is important. It's asking you if you want to use this rubric as the grading rubric. And I'll explain what that means on the, on the next slide. But this is so critically important that you hit this cancel button at this particular, particular juncture. 
and um, so the reason that this is important, and let's say that you um, did happen to hit the uh, the OK button, I'm going to show you what to do so that you can actually go back and fix it, or the faculty could. So let's just say that um, if you did hit that button, the OK button, uh, what happens is the secondary rubric becomes the primary grading rubric. And it's the rubric that shows to the students. And, you know, all of those things occur. If, you, if it happens to where you did hit the OK button, it's OK. You just um, kind of go back into that rubric, and you hit the OK button again, and it switches it back around. <laughs> That's how it works. It's a little weird, and I hope that came across OK. <laughs> that, makes, that makes sense. I got it. <laughs> Good. OK, so then the, um, the final task is really hit Submit. Uh, hitting the Submit button is going to save everything, and that is what you want to do. So at this point, I'm going to turn it back over to Chris. He's got a few questions for you. OK, so are, the sec are secondary rubrics applied to each assignment in a course? No, because we had a discussion. Oh, wait, I have a yeah. click. <laughs> And that's absolutely right. Because <laughs> if you apply them to each assignment, you will go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I now understand that. <laughs> okay. Very good. All right. You did well. <laughs> Thank you. All right. And the, uh, let's see, the next uh, question, Chris, you can go ahead. It looks oh, very sure. similar. I'll ask that. Now that I've learned, I, I, I heard about this, but it was really nice to see it. What is the single most important thing to remember? What is the single most important unintuitive portion of secondary <laughs> rubrics to remember? I click cancel. Yay. 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 Winner. <laughs> Winner and life will be easier. Yes. Yeah, Excellent. <laughs> So, Maria, we'll turn it over to you, and we'll be on the hot seat. Okay, I do have a question. Um, so, you said that the um, the secondary rubrics are set up in the course shell. Does that mean that every time, every quarter that we, or every time we run the class, we have to reset up the secondary rubrics, or can they be set up in the master shell? Masters. Okay. Yes. Good. 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 That's what I was hoping. Yep. Um, good question. That, that was my only question. The answer, Greg. Right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Didn't answer. That was my only question. Cool. Very cool. Well, I think that uh, that ends our webinar, and I believe that the uh, uh, Ekaterina has a, a few comments that she'd like to um, go ahead and insert at this point. Ekaterina. Yeah. Thank you, um, Greg and Chris. It was really fun actually Maria <laughs> it was a very dynamic fun discussion <laughs> it was very helpful for me I tell you this yeah. is perfect timing I needed these answers mm -hmm. for sure and we are recording this webinar so um, we have a second session ske scheduled for uh, this Friday for the 20th so um, and if you have uh, any other faculty who need to know about secondary rubric please invite them so they have one more chance to hear about secondary rubrics from um, Greg and Chris. Um, and of course, um, we'll post the recording on our faculty uh, professional development blog um, in a couple of weeks. So my announcements, first of all, I wanted to let you know that I will send out an evaluation form tomorrow. So just a short form with just a few questions about the webinar. And if you could just take a couple of minutes to answer these questions and leave uh, your suggestions, we would greatly appreciate it. And also, we have two more webinars uh, scheduled for this quarter. Um, the second webinar is in February, and the presenter, Lin Lun, will be talking about um, facilitating uh, group, group work and teamwork using uh, Blackboard tools. So it's a very um, uh, useful uh, webinar, lots of uh, strategies and best practices that she will be sharing. Um, 
and our last webinar for this quarter is scheduled in March and the presenter Erin uh, Thornbury will talk about creating reusable course content using um, Blackboard's content system. It's a new system that we are implementing. And she again will be sharing strategies and best practices. And finally, at the very end of the quarter, on March 28th, uh, we will have our uh, City U Faculty Professional Development Conference. So the theme for this conference is techniques for terrific teaching. And our wonderful uh, faculty submitted many, many really great presentations. So this, again, this uh, conference is scheduled for March 28th. It will be in the evening from 5.30 to, no, from 5 uh, to 8.30 in the evening and we'll have dinner and we'll have presentations and we'll have lots of fun. So I uh, will be sending out an email with the um, registration link very, um, in, a, in a week, maybe in a couple of weeks. So s stay tuned for um, inf more information about the conference. And that is it for today. Again, thank you for participating. Thank you for your questions. Um, and encourage uh, your colleagues to come to the webinar on the 20th. So we'll have a, um, a session 11 in, uh, at 11.30, right, Greg, Chris? Is it 11.30? 11.30, oh. that's correct. 11.30, yeah. So. Uh, fr Friday uh, the 20th at 11.30 and again we will be recording um, each session so the recordings will be posted on the blog.